Good morning students. Today I am going to take the class on collagen, its structure and the associated disorder. In my first class I will be dealing with the structure and the synthesis of collagen and in the second class I will be dealing with the associated disorder related to collagen. So as we all know collagen is a fibrous protein and it is a very important component of the extracellular matrix. Now, what is this extracellular matrix? Extracellular matrix is also referred to as connective tissue that provides the structural and biochemical support to the surrounding cells, protects the organ and also provides elasticity wherever it is required. For example, in the blood vessel, lungs and skin. So basically it is the matrix which gives support to the surrounding cells in an organ. Now three major classes of biochemicals extracellular matrix contains. These biomolecules are structural protein like collagen, elastin and fibrillin, specialized protein like fibronectin and laminin and proteoglycans like heparin sulfate and chondritin sulfate. So these are the three uh, basic components of the extracellular matrix. Now here is one slide which depicts uh, the extracellular matrix component. Here we can see this particular rod-like fiber is the collagen. This is the hyaluronic acid, this segment hyaluronic acid. This is mainly the proteoglycans, right? And this particular segment also contains the specialized protein. So all throughout, this is an extracellular matrix which consists of structural protein, specialized protein and the proteoglycans. Now going further, collagen is the most abundant protein in mammals and accounts for 25 to 30 percent of the protein content. So as we have said it is a structural protein. It is the main fibrous component of the skin, bone, tendon, cartilage and teeth. It comprises about 90 percent of the organic matrix of the bone. Now collagen Type and organization are dictated by the structural role collagen plays in different organs. So what sort of role the collagen is going to play in that particular organ uh, dictates its structure, its organization. Like the extracellular matrix in the vitreous humor of eye these collagens they are dispersed as gel right that gives support whereas in tendons they are bundled in tight parallel fibers that provide great strength in cornea collagen is stacked so as to transmit light with minimum scattering and in bones right these fibers arranged at an angle to each other so as to resist mechanical shear from any direction. Structure of collagen is basically consists of three polypeptide alpha chains. This is the basic structure. Three polypeptide alpha chains which are coiled around each other to form the triple helical configuration. The individual polypeptide chains are mainly of 1000 amino acid residues. Here we should pay attention to this particular term, the alpha chain. We are using alpha chains, we are not using alpha helix. As we know, the secondary structure we have alpha helix and beta plated sheet. That alpha helix and this alpha chains are different and we will describe it in detail in the next few slides. Now 
these three polypeptide alpha chains which are coiled around each other to form triple helical configuration the individual alpha chain they are twisted into left handed helix that is the individual polypeptide chains are left handed helical structure and it has got three residues per turn one turn has got three residues there are 28 distinct type of collagens and which are made up of 30 distinct polypeptide chains. Now here you can see the three, this is one alpha chain, this is the second alpha chain and this is the third alpha chain. So they are owned around each other in a super helical configuration. Individual alpha chains are left handed helix, but when they are coiled around each other, when they form the coiled coil structure, they are basically the right handed super helix, right? Each turn, each turn of this particular alpha chain consists of Three amino acid. One, two, three. Here also in this figure, we can see the three amino acid. One, two, and this three. Each single alpha chain has got three amino acid pattern, and they are further own around each other and forms the triple helical structure which is mainly the right handed super coil. Here it is written what, what we have discussed in the previous slides that three of these alpha chains are then owned into a right handed super helix forming a rod like molecule and the diameter is 1.4 nanometer and the length is nearly 300 nanometer long. Now that 3 amino acid that we have discussed, this 3 amino acid basically maximum of maximum time they are repeating structure consisting of glycine XY. So this glycine is present in every third position in a alpha chain and this XY can be any other amino acid but about 100 of the X positions are occupied by proline and 100 of the Y positions are hydroxyprolines. Proline and hydroxyproline confer rigidity on the collagen molecule. So as we have discussed that the uh, repeating structure present in the alpha chain is glycine XY that is glycine is present in every third position. So basically the question comes why then glycine in every third position as because this particular triple helical structure In the central core, there is very limited space available and glycine is the only amino acid. Glycine is the only amino acid which is simplest and small enough to get accommodated in that particular narrow central core space. So hydroxyproline which is present in the alpha chain is formed post-translationally by hydroxylation of the peptide bound proline residues by proline hydroxylase. That means the proline hydroxylase enzyme, it post-translationally converts the proline, modifies the proline amino acid proline residue in the alpha chain to hydroxyproline. The Y position which consists of hydroxyproline can also have lysine residues or post-translationally modified hydroxylysine by the lysyl hydroxylase enzyme. 
it is just same as that of proline hydroxylase enzyme and both of them has the cofactor ascorbate and alpha ketoglutarate this particular diagram shows the position where the proline is hydroxylated the c4 position of the pyrrolidin ring this is the c4 position where it gets hydroxylated by proline hydroxylase similarly for lysine it is the c5 position which gets hydroxylated by lysine hydroxylase now this particular figure it shows that the alpha chain this is the alpha chain which is having the proline residue how it gets post translationally modified into hydroxyl proline residue and this particular position as you all know what is the position here this is the y position right so we have got glycine x y and this is the proline residue which is present in the y position of the pro collagen which is hydroxylated by this proline hydroxylase enzyme and gives us the hydroxyl proline residue so let us now recapitulate the few slides what we have done so collagen basically is a fibrous protein it consists of it consists of three polypeptide chains triple helical structure right so if this is one alpha chain this will be the second alpha chain and this is going to be the third alpha chain right and part turn of the individual alpha chain is going to have three amino acid one two three every third amino acid is going to be glycine why glycine because glycine is the smallest amino acid which gets accommodated is in this particular narrow space right now this x and y position consists of mainly proline and hydroxyproline this hydroxyproline is the post translationally modified form of this proline amino acid and the enzyme is proline hydroxylase proline hydroxylase similarly the lysine present in the y position is also many a times modified into hydroxylysine and the enzyme is lysyl hydroxylase and both the proline hydroxylase and the lysyl hydroxylase they are going to have vitamin c this is the ascorbic acid and alpha keto glutarate alpha keto glutarate as the cofactor now previously that i mentioned that the collagen helix we are terming it as alpha helix alpha chain we are not terming it as alpha helix why because the alpha helix the secondary structure of protein differs from that of the that of collagen helix in alpha helix we have got intra chain hydrogen bonding the basic requirement for the formation of the coil structure in alpha helix is the hydrogen bonding between the carbonyl oxygen and the amino nitrogen of the peptide backbone right that is the carbonyl oxygen of one amino acid forms hydrogen bonding with the nh group four residues ahead this is the four residues ahead so they are going to form this particular hydrogen bond 
So this is the basic requirement, but that requirement, that particular thing doesn't happen for collagen. In collagen, the individual alpha chain, they assume the helical structure just by the repulsion, the steric repulsion of the pyrrolytin ring, which is there with the proline and the hydroxyproline residues. These pyrrolytin rings, they keep away from each other, right? Why? They assume a helical form. So there is no intra-chain hydrogen bonding, right? In the collagen helix, the hydrogen bonds are, as we will see later, is present in between the chains. This is the interchain in between the chains. The three chains which are present, right? But not within the chain. Now coming on to structural organization of the collagen fiber. First of all, as we have discussed, three collagen alpha chains, each having 100 amino acid approximately, which are bonded over each other, forming a coil-coil triple helical structure, which is right-handed. The right-handed triple helical structure has got a diameter of 1.4 nanometer and a length of around 300 nanometer, right? So once this triple helical structure is formed, lateral, after that there occurs the lateral association of this triple helix, right? So this is where the figure which depicts the lateral association. How they are laterally associated? They are laterally associated in a quarter staggered alignment such that each chain, this is one chain, this is another chain, each chain is displaced this is this is the second chain this chain is displaced from the neighboring chain by less than one quarter of its length so you see this particular length this particular length is less than one quarter so if this is one chain the second chain will be displaced less than one quarter of its length so this is called as quarter staggered alignment and once they laterally associate this triple, triple helical structure they form fibrils so first of all they were triple helix and then the lateral association forms the fibril right the fibril this fibril is having a, a length of diameter of around say 10 to 300 nanometer this is the diameter 10 to 300 here the diameter was 1.4 nanometer for triple helix and here it is 300 nanometer so the fibril has been formed this fibril then again they associate it with each other and forms the thicker fiber so we have got triple helix they come they laterally associated to form fibrils and the fibrils then associated to give us fibers which is of diameter 1 to 20 micrometer in tendons fibers associated into even larger bundles about say 500 micrometer in diameter here you can see the quarter staggered alignment which gives the area of overlapping zone this is the area of overlapping zone this is the area which is having a hole that is the free zone so when we the whole zone when we stain it right and we can get this alternate bending pattern right so here in this slide let us understand what is the quarter staggered alignment that is going to be very much important in the formation of fibril from triple helix. Suppose this is one triple helix, right? Triple helix, right? So it is going to have right. So this is one triple helix. So another triple helix, it is going to arrange itself in this fashion. Here you see this particular length. So this particular length is less than is less than one quarter 
of this entire chain length. So the adjacent helical, triple helix is displaced from the uh, neighboring chain, uh, triple helical structure by less than one quarter, less than one quarter, right? One quarter of the length. Length of what? Length of the neighboring chain. So likewise, we'll have another triple helix which will be further displaced less than one quarter from its neighboring chain. So likewise in this manner, right? It is going to get displaced, right? So similar way here, it's going to come, it's going to come. So it is going to give us a segment of overlapping zone. This is a segment of overlapping zone. And this is a segment of zone which is having a hole within, right, where there is no such triple helix present. So alternate bending pattern we can get in the five rail. So the lateral association of triple helix gives us uh, in a quarter staggered uh, alignment fashion gives us fibers which are bended in at R. At R. So here you see fibril to fiber. First of all, it was the triple helical structure. This is the collagen alpha chain. Three chains come together. They form the triple helical structure, right in the super coil. And the lateral association in quarter staggered manner, you see, this is the overlapping zone. This is the overlapping zone and this is the zone which is not overlapping consists of hole and gives the bending pattern and this microfibril further they associated to give us the structure which is known as fiber first the microfibril then the fibril and ultimately the fiber all by the lateral association Okay, so uh, some collagen, uh, they form fibrils, right, fibrils to fiber. Till now, we have seen that the collagen, the triple helix, they ultimately used to form the fiber through the fibril, right. But few collagens are there that do not form fibrils. So to form fibrils, first of all, there has to be a uninterrupted triple helical structure, which consists of glycine XY repeat sequence, right? Placed at regular intervals, isn't it? But there are few collagens which lack this particular glycine XY repeat sequence. The stretches are there, stretches are there where this repeat sequence are not present, right? So those stretches, those stretches, the uh, sequence results in the formation of globular structure. So we have got a triple helical structure with a, which are interrupted with this globular structure. So they are basically the interrupted triple helical structure. So this type of collagen, they do not form fibrils, right? So if they do not form fibrils, so they have got various other functions and their dis distribution, tissue distribution also depends accordingly. So let us see what are the different classification of collagen according to the structure they form. So we have seen fibril forming, right, collagens. So those collagens are 1, 2, 3, 5, 9, 24, and 27. Basically here, what you have to just remember is uh, this collagen 1, collagen 2, collagen 3, the tissue distribution mainly. So collagen 1, just remember, it is present in the bones, right, in the tendons, right. So they are basically found in the non-cartilaginous tissues. Collagen 2 is found in the cartilaginous tissue. Collagen 3 is found in the vessels, that is those tissues which are extensible. So we have got vessels, blood vessels, right? We have got lungs and skin. So these are where places where collagen 3 is formed, right? From 
here the network like collagen what you should understand is this this is a type of collagen which doesn't form fibrin they mainly form network like structure so the network like structure mainly in the basement membrane of the glomerulus so collagen four they are distributed in the glomerulus right the third variety is fibril associated collagen with interrupted triple helix right so these are mainly collagens which are associated which are associated this this collagens fibril associated collagen with interrupted triple helix like collagen 9 12 14 and 16 they are associated with the fibril forming collagens so you you'll find the few of these collagens are associated with this particular collagen 1 2 3 5 9 24 27 right next coming to the beaded filament so these collagens they are mainly uh, long collagens and have got beaded appearance so this has got the 6 26 and 27 coming to the anchoring fibrils this is collagen 7 which forms the anchoring fibrils they basically connect the basal lamina to the collagen tissues which are there in the skin the collagen fibrils which are there in the skin so these are mainly found in the dermoepidermal junction right dermoepidermal junction they are encoding fibril then next comes the transmembrane collagen which has got a shorter their transmembrane through and throughout the membrane they are present so the end terminal has got shorter length and the carboxy terminal carboxy terminal has got domains with long interrupted triple helixes and then we have got multiplexins now coming to synthesis of collagen first of all we have got the dna which has got the genes for the synthesis of the pro alpha chain the alpha chain which is present in the collagen in the triple helical structure they are mainly the pro alpha chains these genes they are encoded into the mrna transcribed into mrna this mrna uh, then is directed to the ribosomes right in the rough endoplasmic reticulum where they form the pro alpha chain when they form the pro alpha chain right this alpha chain the pro alpha chain has got what has got the leader sequence right they have got the signal sequence or the leader sequence the signal sequence right this signal sequence they direct this particular uh, pre pro alpha sorry i mentioned it as pro alpha chain first of all the dna of the collagen they are going to transcribe into the mrna and this mrna is going to give us the pre pro alpha chain this pre pro alpha chain consists of the leader sequence and once the leader sequence is removed this leader sequence is present because it guides this pre pro alpha chain to the endoplasmic reticulum and once inside the endoplasmic reticulum this pre pro alpha chain the leader sequence is cleaved and this pre pro alpha chain minus the leader sequence right gives us the pro alpha chain gives us the pro alpha chain this pro alpha chain is hydroxylated as i have said you in the y positions by prolyl hydroxylase enzyme and the ultimate repeating structure the three amino acid repeat sequence is glycine xy glycine proline hydroxy proline APH. now the y position also consists of lysines and they are also hydroxylated by the lysyl hydroxylase enzyme right and these hydroxylysine residues can be glycosylated with glucose or galactose so this everything happens inside the endoplasmic reticulum in the pro alpha chain right this pro alpha chain ultimately has got the 
propeptide extension in both the C-terminal region and the N-terminal region. So this is the C-terminal region and this is the N-terminal region. So this pro-alpha chain has got the propeptide extensions. So this has also got some function, this propeptide extension. They are rich in sulfur containing amino acids, right? And uh, this C-terminal propeptide extensions, they are involved in intra-chain as well as inter-chain disulfide bond formation, not the amino terminal propeptide extensions. Amino pro terminal propeptide extensions only will form disulfide bond in within the chain, that is intra-chain, not inter-chain. So this is the disulfide bond they will, they will be forming within the chain, not interchain. So once this disulfide bond, so as a result what happens is that the three alpha chains, they start coiling, right? And ultimately they coil and form the triple helical structure, okay? Now once this triple helical structure is formed, this entire event takes place inside the cell. Now this particular structure is going to get secreted in the ex in the extracellular space in the extracellular space this is known as tropocollagen this is the tropocollagen and the amino proteinase and the carboxy proteinase which is present in the extracellular space they cleave this extension peptide right once this extension peptides are cleaved by the uh, peptidases the proteinases the n terminal and c terminal which is present in the extracellular space they are finally converted into the collagen triple helix structure right once this collagen triple helix structure is formed the further Conversion into the fibril is the self-assembly that is the lateral association as we have seen in the quarter staggered manner as we have seen in more previous discussion. So all in all, two spaces are there where the entire synthesis occurs. One is intracellular, another is, another is extracellular. So in the intracellular, the main events are cleavage of the signal peptide where the Pre-procollagen is being directed to the endoplasmic reticulum and inside the endoplasmic reticulum the signal peptide is going to get cleaved and the pre-pro is going to get converted to pro-collagen. Further in this pro-collagen inside the endoplasmic reticulum hydroxylation occurs of the proline residues and some lysyl residues by the hydroxylase enzyme right and this hydroxylase enzyme as we all know the cofactor is your ascorbate and alpha ketoglutarate and then the um, extension peptides which are present in the pro alpha chain is going to form the disulfide bonds and resulting in the coiled manner formation of the triple helix once the triple helix is formed it has been excreted in the extracellular secreted in the extracellular space and in the extracellular space the amino and carboxy terminal propeptides are cleaved by the amino proteinases and further assembly into collagen fibers is uh, due to the quarter staggered alignment this is the spontaneous self association quarter staggered alignment and this quarter staggered alignment this fibril structure it has been stabilized by the deamination of the epsilon amino group of the lysyl residues and the hydroxylysyl residues by the enzyme lysyl oxidase that we are going to discuss in the later slides just remember once the fibril is formed this lysine residues or the hydroxylysine residues which are present in the alpha chain they are uh, acted upon by the enzyme lysyl oxidase which is a copper containing enzyme and this lysyl oxidase converts this epsilon amino group of lysyl and hydroxylysine residues to the corresponding aldehydes and then these corresponding aldehydes they are going to form cross links by either Schiff's base 
or by the aldol condensation products so what is this case space and what is this aldol condensation products we are going to discuss it in our later slides so just for now you remember this is helpful in formation or stab uh, giving stability to the collagen fibrils and this linkage this cross links occurs between the two adjacent triple helical structure here you see this is the cross links the oxidative deamination of specific lysyl or hydroxyl lysyl residues results in the formation of aldehydes right this reaction is catalyzed by lysyl oxidase which is a copper containing enzyme the aldehyde cross linkage precursors that are so produced they either form skids base with the neighboring amino group or they can form aldol condensation product with the neighboring aldehydes so what it actually means we will understand in the next slide see if this is the lysine residue right this lysine residues which are present in collagen so these are acted upon by the lysyl amino oxidase copper containing enzyme as i have said and the epsilon amino group this is the epsilon this is the epsilon amino group this epsilon amino group is getting converted to an aldehyde this is oxidative deamination right so this aldehyde derivatives of one particular chain of collagen is going to form cross linkage with a unmodified amino group of the lysine residues of the adjacent chain by forming a skips base linkage so this is skips base linkage right also what can happen is that both the chains lysine residues gets modified into the corresponding aldehydes by oxidative deamination and these two aldehydes these two aldehydes they gets linked up by the aldol condensation cross links right so one is your aldol condensation cross links and another is your skips base cross links so this cross links gives stability to the fibrils or the fibers the lateral association of the triple helix occurs and uh, this stability in between the triple helical uh, structure is given by this particular arrangement so with this i am going to end today's discussion so uh, a bit of structure and bit of synthesis that we have learned and uh, a few basics of collagen is going to build up our a base for further understanding of the associated disease process which we are going to discuss in the next class thank you